Hello, folks. This Hangout, Hangout on Air is live. And tonight, we may be joined by a third person, but we have myself in Louisiana. We have John and Neely in Georgia, and we may have the Whiskey Scout from Kansas. He told me about two hours ago he was going to join. All right, but wh whatever the case, we have Rich and Rare Reserve. Now, <laughs> people say, look at that little bottle. Yeah, at first I bought this little plastic bottle about two years ago because I was at Martin Wine Cellar, and they they had these for $1.39. I figured, well, even if I don't like it, it's no downside to it. And But I never opened it, and then I felt like I wanted to have the real legitimate bottle, you know, so I bought the, the glass. There is a big plastic 1.75 liter it's like one of the best looking glass bottles you can get i think for 10.99 man this looks like a 30 40 dollar bottle easily yeah and then i realized i said wait a minute I'm saying that to myself you didn't pay 10.99 don't you remember you got it for 9.99 and i was like saying to myself oh right right because i kept putting it off like ah uh, maybe i'll get it and then I went somewhere and they had it for $10.99. I mean $9.99, excuse me. I said, well, heck, for $9.99, no way I'm passing out. And I'll never see it again. And I actually did not ever see it again for that price. So well, it's time to examine. Um, all I'm gonna do is when I get down a little bit lower in the glass, I'll just pour the plastic in there. Probably won't make. So you've had this before, right? No, this is my first time with the rich and rare. I've had the, I've had the standard expression, um, and then I've had the black velvet and the black velvet reserve, but never the rich and rare reserve. I've been sitting on this bottle for a while. I haven't. I've been waiting to open it for this examination. Wow. Boy, it's, it is so, this, this whiskey is so rye oriented and it's not made with natural flavors. I mean, it probably is, but they don't say it on the bottle. Woo. I did a little research about it. I will read the comments. So far, I'm liking the aroma. It's not um, presenting with any of that natural flavoring type stuff. You're right. I'm trying to find. Oh, yeah, here it is on qualityliquorstore.com. They must have got a sell sheet. I know what happens at these liquor stores. The company says, Here's our stuff, and they give them these sell sheets. You know, it's like a literally a sheet of paper that was printed, and it's got the company's description of it, blah, blah, blah. Oh, <laughs> I hit the wrong. Oh my gosh. I hit I was under 21. Yeah, right. I wish I was. All right. Okay. So they're saying here, and then we'll talk about, you want me to read this? Yeah. yeah. I'm 21 and over. This is an online liquor store, but they have their actual, they have an actual, I guess, premises. Rich and rare reserve comes from a full bodied blend of hand selected reserve barrel whiskeys from Sazerac stock in Canada of more than 200,000 barrels of Canadian whiskey. I knew they had bought all these distilleries and they had all these warehouses, but they don't, they're very secretive. They don't tell people where it's coming from. I don't know why. It might be because they share whiskey with other companies. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, the nose starts off. Okay, let's follow this. Let's see if it matches what they're saying. I know it can influence us, but it's not that big of a deal. The nose starts off with a velvety depth. Yeah, it is complex 
relative to the regular rich and rare. But I want you to feel free to talk. I don't want to just be blabbing my head off, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm getting some caramel. I'm picking up the wood presence with this one, definitely more so than with the regular rich and rare. There is a little, you mentioned rye forward. Uh, there is a, a nice burn in the nostrils. I know some of it's coming from the alcohol, but I definitely feel like I'm picking up on more rye than I was with the, the standard rich and rare. Yeah. It smells really good. It smells really good. Um, velvety smooth. I Yeah, I'll go along with that. Yeah, velvety depth. It says the initial sip. Now, now let's let's go with the initial sip. All right, before we taste it, let me read the comments. Heck. Tyler says, hello, folks. Tyler. Man, so well. Hello, Tyler. What's up, Tyler? You join good us to hear from you. Yeah, good to hear from you. You can join us if you like. Um, I can send you invite so fast. Maxwell says, hello, Ron. Glad to see you. And hello, your friend. <laughs> How are you in Moscow? No snow. It's strange for this time, November. Well, you're at, you're in Moscow with no snow. I'm in Louisiana with, with heat and humidity. In fact, it's warm and humid. So <sighs> I'm pretty sure everybody in America can get rich and rare reserve. It's pretty common. Okay, the taste. So let's taste it, and then I'll read what they're saying. And I've had it before. You haven't. So here you go. Drum roll. John's initial tasting. Yeah. Getting the, the caramel follows through on the palate. Getting some caramel sweetness. A little bit of vanilla. The first thing, though, really, the, which I don't feel like I was getting with the, the standard uh, rich and rare is that more prominent wood forward presentation uh, and not really a charred wood like you've said in a lot of your videos that sucking on a toothpick type thing where it's it's the wood is there but it's not it's really not charred um, but you can tell that this has been sitting in a barrel for a while um, it does have this is kind of strange but it, it is pretty smooth but it's almost and maybe this is weird for me to say this, but I'm picking up almost like a chalky thing with it. Um, chalk. It, not not flavor or anything like that. I don't eat chalk, obviously, but like the like um, I don't know. Um, like if you're if you eat a tongue or something like that, it kind of builds up uh, a little layer on the inside of your mouth. It, it's almost something like that it's it's strange but it's not bad um Lime. there's uh, <laughs> something a little limestone. different limestone folks um pretty short finish um drops off pretty quickly a little spice a little peppery note with this one on the on the finish as well like some white pepper um and like I said, right after that, it drops off and you're ready to go back in for another sip. It doesn't linger. Um, the wood notes are nice. The it, It's sweet as well, that caramel sweetness. There's maybe a little bit of that nutty quality that you get with a lot of these cheaper, um, the Canadian whiskeys, but it's definitely not to the extent of the standard rich and rare or the um, Canadian leaf, Canadian limited. It's very mild, uh, and it's more balanced, which I like because the wood comes through more. The caramel sweetness and some of the other flavors, toffee, light vanilla, um, so and you're not picking up on as much of that natural flavoring type component that you do with a lot of these types of products. So I like that about this. I noticed that Food Quig today posted a video for Rich and Rare. Oh, I have to check that out. He does a good job with his descriptors as well. Yeah. He didn't really like it too much, but he, he bought a bottle. It was so cheap. And he was saying, um, oh, let me give it a nose. And he was like, why am I even giving this stuff a nose? You know, it was kind of funny. <laughs> but um, 
you know, he, you know, you just know he isn't going to dump it out. He's going to drink it all, you know. Right. He was talking about how, well, y'all watched the video. It was pretty, pretty interesting. Um. Oh, man. All right. Taste on my end. I already tasted a little bit. All those things you talked about with a little tea, like tea, like tea leaves, you know, and um, uh, some kind of caramel candy, toffee candy, or it's, but it's not that. It's like um, confectionaries, that real powdered sugar, confectionary sugar. It's hard to say. Um, now, The barrels they use could be decades old. So you might have a charred barrel, right? But if you're adding whiskey to it constantly for 50 years, that's going to dissipate. So you just, like we were we were saying, you're just going to get this background wood note. It's not going to, if you're a bourbon drinker, you got to totally detach yourself from those kind of thoughts. Exactly. Yeah. Because aside from the 80 proof, it is not going to be anything like bourbon. It's a different animal. And so I know people at, okay, so like when I work at Bingo at the Knights of Columbus, they're always drinking, you know, they drink and drink, drink. And they admonish me, like they kind of like reprimand me because I don't drink enough. Because it's like violating the whole con concept. They say, but it's, you don't have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're working, the beer is free. Do you understand? I said, I understand. I'm just, I drink one and it's enough. You see, for me, for my personal taste, that's my nightcap beer. Um, and I checked the dates because I've had some bad experiences the last two years with out-of-date beer and I'm just not going that route anymore. So I checked their Coors Light. I said, I have a mind to drink Coors Light. I, the best by date was June, 2018. I said, whoop, you're going right back in that 15 pack. <laughs> so then I checked Bud Light. I said, oh, good. December 2018. So I pulled, I drank it. It was fine. You know, I don't know. I don't understand all of this um, warfare between Coors Light, Bud Light, Miller Light. Because to me, they're not that different. But um, some people are really, really attached to it. Did I enjoy the Bud Light? Well, yeah, of course. I did, and then I tried some other stuff. All right, let's get up. All right, so, um, but they admonished me because I just drink a little bitty bit, and it's amazing. They say, what is wrong? You know, what, what's wrong with him? But um, they have some guys over there that only drink bourbon. That's the point I was trying to get to. And that's it. They're going to drink bourbon, Elijah Craig, whatever, you know, that's it. Jack Daniels, that's it. No deviation ever. And I mean ever. And then there's this other guy. He only drinks Canadian whiskey. But he always drinks it. Like he's going to walk to the back, go in the back room. He's going to come out with that cup. It's probably water, ice, and whatever Canadian whiskey they've got on hand. With They've always got some, always. And it was Crown Royal this past time. So he just said to me, that's what I prefer, these Canadian blends. Well, is it my place to tell him, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't think Canadian whiskey is very good. You need to reevaluate your entire life. I mean, if that's what he likes, who am I to tell him? Right. Need to try this. It's like I don't think white beer has much flavor, but it's the most popular style of beer in the way your Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light. If more people drink that stuff, then so who am I to say that that's watered down? You know, half as good stuff. You know, right? And if they'd have had Budweiser there, I would have drank that, obviously. Right. And if they'd have had Budweiser, Copper Lager, Jim Beam. I'd have drank that. You know, it's like I'm gonna I go would, up the ladder of what's available. 
I went uh, I went to a Halloween party on Tuesday before I left uh, to go to go out of town um, at the front office here at the you know where I live. They had a Halloween party for all the residents, and um, they had I think Oak Leaf wine. They had Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light. That's it. I asked her. I said, "You don't have." You don't have Budweiser? She said, no, we just have light beer because most people don't drink the, the heavy stuff is what she called it. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. But you know what? Everybody was loving some, you know, loving their Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light. So that's the mindset. Believe me, that is the mindset because I can remember 20 years ago asking my uncle. I said, why are you not drinking this Miller High Life light? They had it in the fridge in Grand Isle, Louisiana. Oh, that stuff's too rich. He drinks Miller Light, but the Miller High Life Light was too rich. And I'm like, okay, psh, whatever. All right. But that in his sensitivity level, just a little bit more flavor and body, as we know Miller High Life Light has more flavor and body. But in his mind, it was like too rich, translated too gross. And he didn't like <laughs> Okay, back to this. But it's just, you know, it's the whole point we're making is that people have different preferences. Right. Not a right or wrong option. I've run into that, though, on YouTube with beer reviews that some people think it is a right or wrong option. Like the guy telling me every metric will show you that he, he listed the beers or obviously inferior to Sam 76. I said, but the only metric I'm using is flavor. Right. You know, I don't need somebody to upbraid me and tell me you're obviously wrong. No, I'm not wrong because I drink Sam 76. And if that's an exciting beer, everything's an exciting beer, okay? Pretty much, yeah. Back to this. All right. Um, that's why I didn't buy the winter pack. I was going to buy that winter pack. And I said, two bottles of Sam 76. No, nope, I won't buy it. All right. Uh, but that is a good point. We're talking about, you know, we're using beer, but we're it's the same with whiskey. Uh, your Irish blended and your Canadian, which all your Canadian is going to be blended. Those are like your light beers of the whiskey world. Then you get into bourbon, single malt scotch. Those are your your heavy duty type things. So if you want something that's easy, mellow, doesn't necessarily have a ton of flavor, but it's smooth and there's nothing off about it, drink Canadian whiskey or Irish whiskey. Ah, good point. Irish I think the rule of the the best rule of the road is this: drink what you want to drink, right? Not what you think other people think you should drink. Okay, now back to this: the initial sip shows the complex intermingling of mocha and caramel. I should have a comma here, followed by a wonderful merger of wood and rye grain blending with tangy dark fruits and then we'll go to the finish uh let me see about all of that i'm not now but i, I understand that these people blend whiskey that's their job they do this all day so they're going to detect a lot of things that i would be like not gonna i'm not an expert so i don't expect to be so precise about it Mocha caramel, mocha, that's coffee. Um, I did say tea. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like that hazelnut coffee mixture, though. Hmm. I don't really get the the mocha, but I do I do pick up on some of like the dark fruit, like, you know, not necessarily a fig, but maybe maybe somewhere in well, maybe somewhere like in the fig date range <laughs> but i definitely don't pick up on any coffee that's an interesting note that they're describing because i don't get that they're saying they're saying tangy dark fruits 
You mean like a plum or a prune? Let me see about that. I might have to drink a whole lot of this tonight to get down to that <laughs> table. Maybe, maybe they should specify it. After, after four drams, you'll start to pick up on the dark fruit. After five, you might start to hallucinate. Right. I'm not <laughs> doing this for me. I'm doing this for the project. Um, yeah, maybe some raisin or something, you know. Uh, wood and rye. Well, we already talked about that, so they're right about that. Definitely, Definitely wood. It's obviously got rye in it and, and not a small amount. So I can see a person that, you know, you get these whiskey people that just love rye, 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 rye. They might really go for this, don't you think? Yeah, this is um, this is probably as rye forward of a Canadian whiskey as I've had. Um, you know, the, well... Yeah, I mean, I've had a lot of a lot of really high rye mash bill bourbons, and, you know, uh, American whiskeys, but for Canadian whiskey, this is pretty pretty strong on the rye. Yeah. Now, somebody might comment, "Well, why don't you go drink Canadian Club 100% rye?" Well, it's pretty obvious that's going to be more rye oriented since it's 100% rye. I've had that. Oh, you had it, huh? I've had that, and if you're a big rye guy, you probably would be disappointed because it's very smooth. It's not much more, I don't know, if, if you've had the standard Canadian club and you drink that, honestly, I don't know if you'd be able to tell the difference. I was very disappointed for, I thought it was a good whiskey, but it was probably my least favorite of the Canadian club line because I felt like it was false advertising. I didn't get a really strong rye presence with it. Okay, that's making me even more curious to try it. Now, the only rye, rye whiskey I ever tried, honestly, I, I mean, I might have had samples at some liquor store or something. Because there, see, oftentimes when I go to a convenience store or liquor store, they're giving samples. So, you know, but uh, somebody, thank you, Sonia, gave me an unopened bottle of Sazerac rye whiskey. Right. I did a video that was years ago, like six, seven years ago. I think it was 2011. And we I really liked it. I said, said oh, you know, this is really interesting. And uh, that was like the first whiskey I ever had. But I was thinking of myself, well, I knew rye is spicy and peppery. So I thought, oh, okay, I could get into this. But she didn't want it. Somebody probably gave it to her and she didn't want it. You know, like, Ugh. so, but I loved it. Anyway, what were we going to say? We examined a pretty rye heavy uh well two actually we did the old granddad and the old granddad bonded and those are both super rye forward in my opinion i think you agreed uh oh. but super rye rye forward presentation with those products especially the bonded oh yeah yes that's true i would go along with that i forgot about that um let's see i'm gonna pour this plastic in here just to get rid of the bottle Oh, yeah, that works out perfectly. Okay. Um, it says the finish is lively with a zing of rye. Yeah, I don't know. Is it lively? Let's see. That's a strange term to me. I, I don't really know what they mean by that, you know? it's Is it lively in the sense that it has an alcohol burn and a peppery note? Okay, yeah, I guess, but lively can mean a lot of different things when you're talking about a beverage, you know? I guess it's like my friend Elwin always says, it pops, it pops, okay, it pops. Well, soda, soda pop is a lively beverage because it's carbonated. Yeah. But is, how, do you, how does that compare to something like this? It doesn't, so I don't know, strange. You're right. Okay, uh, let's see. Now, going back to the tasting notes, let's see, Tyler. Oh, Craig says, Tyler Manso, hello. Tyler Manso says, thumbs up, clink in the glasses. Oh, boy, look at all these comments. My girlfriend the other day said she Googled my name and a beer review came up. Ha ha. She learned that she doesn't like me with a mustache. 
Ah, uh, that is comical. Laugh out loud. Glad to see you guys still doing a good job. Thank you. How many years is this reserve age? Well, there's no age statement, so it's probably four, five, six years. Who knows? It could be a mixture. That's the problem. It could be a, a big jumble. It, a it jumble. does say, huh? It doesn't. It doesn't say anything exactly, but it does say that. It is uh, distilled in small batches and aged patiently in hand-picked oak barrels. So that's at least four years, right? By the uh, yeah, I was about to say I was about to say it's probably four years, and they they might have some in there that's twelve years, but of course you have to go with the youngest age. Yeah. So they probably just decide not to put an age statement. Alex the beer master said, "What's up, Ron and John? Uh, we're just tasting whiskey." Craig said, I did the same thing. I saw the Sam Winter Pack included the Sam 76. No thanks. And how is that a winter beer? It's not. Yeah, right. It's like, I think they had a bunch of stuff left over. And they said, hell, just put it in the Winter Pack. I mean, I, I hate to say something like that, but I get that feeling. Yeah. Now, does the Winter Pack have the, the 76 in lieu of the, of the Boston Lager, which they oh, usually Oh, no. Oh, no. So you're getting four, so four beers out of the twelve pack are non-winter beers. Two Sam seventy six and two Boston Lager. Yeah, ain't that a great deal? So I was like, no thanks. You're really only getting eight different winter beers, four different varieties, eight total, and then two common beers. Yes, yeah, so I I didn't I didn't buy it. Okay, Tyler says. I would love to see one of your one of you review organic wine products. I've been getting into them. Trader Joe's has some cheap ones. Well, I would be open to that, assuming I ever get around to it. So it's, I would say it's probably unlikely, but it's not out of the question. No. Now Craig says, oh, I forgot to get my water. Do you guys like the TV show Three's Company? <laughs> uh yeah a little bit i thought john ritter made the show you know. all right with his genius com comedic skills okay now let's read what they say uh john all right we wanted to introduce a product that has a nice depth and complexity and felt like some of the great canadian whiskeys of 20 and 30 years ago says drew mayville Drew Mayville, Sazerac's master blender and Canadian whiskey expert. So they're trying to make it like something from 1998 or even 88. Full flavored and peppery with creamy maple syrup, clean oak, clean, clean, no char. Hints of rose petals, dark fruit, I said, what did I say? Plum or raisin? And tangy oranges, fruity and spicy. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to be prepared to go along with all of that, but I would be prepared to go along with most of that. Yeah, most of it. The oak, for sure. Uh, maybe a little of the dark fruit. Um, definitely the rye. Uh, and it is smooth. I mean, easy drinking. Hey! Robert. Hey, Robert. Now, let me read the last little wrap-up paragraph here of what Sazerac's saying, okay? And we're going to go to Robert. Rich and Rare Reserve is the third recent Canadian whiskey product from the Sazerac company. Caribou Crossing Single Barrel. Caribou Crossing Single Barrel, which I've never seen. And Royal Canadian Small Batch, which I've never seen. Debuted in early 2010, quote, our continued development of new Canadian whiskey concepts is an indication of how strongly we feel about the opportunity to reinvigorate the Canadian whiskey category with consumers. We feel Rich and Rare Reserve will prove to be an attractive option for consumers who want a full body whiskey that can stand very well on its own straight, like we're drinking it but can also work really well mixed, according to Kevin Richards, Sazerac's brand manager for Canadian whiskey. Well, 
So obviously this has only been on the market for at the most eight years, but probably less than that. It's a newer, one of their, what would you call that? Their above premium products? They just uh, yeah, I guess. It's not really premium price point. So, I mean. Right. Well, well. But for their line, yeah. If we're able to get a dynamite product for a low price, I can see that as a all upside and no downside scenario. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now we have to turn the floor over to Robert, to the Whiskey Scout. He's going to talk about it. And I'm going to go get some water, and I can hear when I walk into the next room. So have at it. From Kansas. I, I had it down at 7 o'clock, and so I was upstairs working. And Can you hear me, first of all? Yeah, I had it 7 Eastern, though, see? So, oh, well. Yeah. It messed me up big time. Anyway, then I come down here to check, and you guys were going. So uh, I, I bought this 375. And the first thing I noticed when I bought the 375 was all the imprint embossment on the bottle. Yeah, beautiful label. And I mean, beautiful. Glass. Trader 101, which is another Sazerac product, oh. based on Buffalo Trace. Uh oh, uh oh. Exact same bottle. <laughs> exactly. Oh. I mean, the embossment, everything on it is exactly the same. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, let me close this door. Uh, as far as comparing it to the others, where you guys are at right now in the comparison, uh, this is more, and I don't like to use the term smooth, but smooth is the correct term to me. It, it, it's a little more alcoholic on the nose than on the palate. I Me, mean, I notice it more. Yeah. And I don't know. There's a lot more toffee. On this one, I get a lot more toffee. I get just a little bit of chocolate. Think of orange toffee with just a little orange note in it. I get that. And this is just on the nose now for me. Yeah. There's still a little of that plum whinish, whatever it is that they do up in Canada. <laughs> Caught in stuff. So have you guys tasted yet or? Yeah, we've been imbibing a bit. Okay. But not too much. Because see on the taste, the alcohol I get on the nose is not really there. Uh, and I still get that orange toffee. Just a little bit of, I mean, it's just a hint of chocolate too in there. Part of that toffee note. And then it sounds a little wonky, but there's a little menthol in the finish. I'll go along with that. Just a little bit of menthol in the finish there. Wood notes are, I don't really get much in the way of wood notes. We got it. We got the wood. But like the, the company says, it's, what did they say, John? It's um uh, clean, clean oak, I think. Or, yeah, clean without the char, in other words. <coughs> yeah, that would, that would make sense. It's just not, not very, it's not a dominant note at all. Yeah, if you're a real woody guy. This is not going to cut the mustard for you. Mm -mm. Nope, it sure won't. But if you're a sweet caramel candy, confectionery sugar type of person, this might work. <clears throat> yes, I agree. I think it's interesting, though, about the bottle. And the cap is real ornate on the reserve versus the very lackluster normal cap. Yeah, right. They're trying to make it a Crown Royal cap. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, I let, I have my son try it. He's, he's moving back this way from Kansas City. He's been working up there, so he's moving back to us. And I gave him some earlier today, and he went, oh. 
<laughs> but he's not a whiskey guy. He's just not. That is comical. <laughs> anyway, I'm so sorry. I was so late. My wires were really crossed. That's okay. I'm sorry about the confusion, but um, yeah, I like to do them at six central. Yeah. Because then if you go eight, if you go seven central, then you got the east east coast at nine. I mean at eight, and then it gets a little late, you know. So. Right. Well, I always thought it was at six, and then I, my phone put it in there. I didn't look to see it was Eastern time, and it just kind of yeah. was, I don't know. That's okay. I always said it at um, the Eastern, but it'll give us, it should give us the Central. I don't know. I don't understand. Right. But it, but for future reference, I'll always set it at Eastern. Okay. Well, no, it won't, yeah, it, I'll catch it from this point on. Well, let me ask you this question about this uh, rich and rare reserve. For both of you guys, both of you guys, I know what I'm going to say already. How do you regard this product for a 1099 750 bottle? Better than the original. It's better than this one to me. Yeah. I mean, and if I put them side by side, you know, I paid seven dollars flat for the 375, so 1099 would be about the normal price for it here. Uh, it's a much it's worth it. I mean, it's it's a much softer experience. Does that make sense? It's a much more easier on your palate. I think. Go ahead, John. Uh, it's uh, yeah. Okay, John. No, I'm, <clears throat> I agree. Um, the thing with me, I, I don't know. They're both the the rich and rare versus the rich and rare reserve. They're both pretty budget price. I'm gonna do a blind taste test to really compare them because I thought the black velvet reserve was so far so much better. Than the standard black velvet and i couldn't hardly tell the difference um for a dollar two difference between the bottles is it worth it maybe if you're drinking it neat if you're going to use it as a mixer then just buy the cheaper of the two um but i do think i i did notice that there was more wood presence with this one um ron and i were talking earlier about the the noticeable rye uh component that i don't feel like i was getting with the standard rich and rare um so i think it is more complex which you also said robert as well it, it has more complexity to it um you described it a lot better than i did i wasn't getting all the the chocolate and the orange and all that stuff but we were reading off of the website earlier before you joined and there was a lot of they did mention that so your palate oh, really? is more refined i think than than mine is but um yeah but yeah i say I say go for it. It's it's pretty dang cheap either way you slice, you know, any way you slice it. Uh, but if you're gonna buy the Rich and Rare Reserve, drink it neat. Otherwise, buy the regular. I um, now down here in South Louisiana, we're close to the Gulf Coast. We're looking at seven dollars forty two cents for Rich and Rare at Walmart. And then I can go right there to Matherns and get the reserve for ten ninety nine. So we're talking about about three dollars and fifty cents difference. Uh, well, I don't think it's worth saving the three fifty. I would say be you know, you know, be willing to pay a little extra, get the ten ninety nine, and you're going to get a lot, well, a pretty good amount better product now. You're not going to suffer too much if you pay seven forty-two at Walmart and get the rich and rare. As long as you are looking at it in the right context, don't buy rich and rare reserve and think you're going to get. Um, Crown oh, Royal, reserve. yeah, Crown Royal, Mesquite, you know, and all that. I mean, don't be an idiot. You know, have some kind of sense about it. Uh, you're going to get rich and rare. Seven forty-two. That's the cheapest whiskey you can get at Walmart. So that should tell you something. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Retraction. The cheapest you can get is the Caliber Canadian whiskey for five ninety-six. Oh, I can't wait to review that one. Five ninety-six. Oh boy. But um, in that beautiful plastic square bottle, seven fifty. But um, you know, you got to put these things in a little bit of context. 
uh, I think people that are not well versed in the whiskey world, like let's say amateurs, like I'm practically an amateur, but um, somebody off the street that says, oh, heck, let me try it. You know, they might like Rich and Rare Reserve. It's got those natural flavors, plum wine, rum, brandy, other kind of oddities. It might appeal to people because these days, 2018, people like, like a lot of sugary flavors. So the Reserve could be a good step up to, to getting into a more uh, credible, serious uh, whiskey. So I don't see that there's a downside to either one of these products. They have their place in that sort of progression that you do, but that's the way I see it. I don't know what you think about it, but I that's do. just my viewpoint. I do get more of the rye note now that you mentioned that. Yeah. This has more of that, still that acorn sort of note to me. This one doesn't have that at all. This is a better whiskey all the way around, I think, for sipping. If you're going to mix, you might as well get the cheapest. Of yeah. the two. Right, because you're going to destroy any kind of discernible character right. anyway, so why not? Right. But if you want to sit on the street corner and lean against the wall, <laughs> that would work. <laughs> it wouldn't be too bad. Well, I'm not on the street corner. I'm in the kind of the middle of the street here. Um, but uh, and now for my next trick. No, um, I think, you know, we're not, I, I, I don't want the audience to be confused. We are not sitting here talking about elevated things. But the title should have indicated that. But I think when I think about these things, I think Sazerac is pretty clever. They're clever. They say, well, you know, there's a lot of cheapskates in the world. And, and that's a bad term to use because a lot of people just frankly do not have the money. And if you don't have the money, you're not a cheapskate. You buy what you can afford. A cheapskate is somebody that could buy really good stuff. They just too chintzy to buy it. But Sazerac knows that. They say, okay, there's that audience. And then there's Walmart, right? Okay, well, all right, which is appeals to that whole crowd. And is it working for them? Well, Rich and Rare's number 19 out of 20 in sales. It's in the top 20 whiskey sales in the whole United States this past year. To me, that's winning. That's my final word on it. Would I, would I recommend it? Yes. If you look at it within the proper context, which is a very important point. Okay, so that's it. Uh, you two guys, you have the floor. Go ahead, John. <clears throat> I would definitely recommend it for the price point. I mean, $10.99 for me, um, it's a great value. You're not getting the natural flavoring and some of the other stuff that you get with the Standard, rich, and rare. It's a little bit more refined with the oak presence, I think. Uh, you get more wood. Um, and I, I like the extra rye presence as well. So I think if you're going to, if you want a cheap uh, sipping whiskey to be, you know, to be drank neat, I think the rich and rare reserve is a winner. And it's hard to argue with 1099 for a 750 mil. And come on, man. Look at that. Look at that fancy glass bottle. You can't go wrong. Yeah, with that Crown Royal Crown Royal esque cap. <laughs> I agree with you. Okay, now the whiskey scout, and then I'm gonna read comments. Okay. Uh everything you and John both have said is really spot on correct about this. Uh it's as far as the Canadian drinking whiskey, it's really it's it'll suffice. It's not it's not gonna win you over. If you've got a more refined palate, you're used to single malt scotches or something like that, you're not going to. This isn't going to be your poison of choice in that case. But, you know, if 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 you are on a budget, if you walk into a small town liquor store in western Kansas 
and you're pretty limited and you don't like the strong bourbon flavors, for instance, leaning toward a Canadian is going to make more sense. And in this case, this would suffice for a budget Canadian as a sipping whiskey. This really is not that bad at all. Uh, and I think, I think that pretty much, you know, like I said, sums it up. You guys got the, the 750. I went to two different liquor stores in a little town near Mulvane. And one didn't have any. Then the other one had the 175 for 20 bucks, And then the, the 375 for $7. So that's why I ended up with this bottle. But when I handed it to me, I was like, I've seen that bottle before. But anyway, I, I digress. Uh, yeah, it'll suffice. It, it's one of those whiskeys that will suffice. And if you want to mix it, you're not going to get any strange overtones because it has enough grain from that, from your rye that you're starting to develop in there that it's going to accentuate, especially maybe a ginger or a, or a uh, lemon lime like a Sprite or 7-Up or whatever, you know. That's going to really kind of balance some of that sweetness out, I think. And I think it would work real good either way. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah, I... I, I think that's a good assessment, and I um I don't know why it's so popular in Louisiana. It could have something to do with the the fact that the person who owns the company lives in New Orleans, you know. But um, it's everywhere around here. You can go to these stores, and you get these huge bottles. And I, I was with my friend David, and he was saying, "What was he saying? Oh, look, it's plastic." He thumped it, boom, 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 boom. It's plastic. I said, "What's well, a one point seven five? I said, you know, those are usually plastic. I said, but you can get the glass bottles. Oh, yeah, I never. And what do you say? I never had that. I said, well, you could try it. You know, he, he was, he's he, he told me this afternoon, he said, he's going like full bore for scotch. He's like totally caught up in it. I said, well, um, there's nothing wrong with that. I said, I believe it. Because now he's just going crazy, you know. But um, in a good crazy way, you know, I don't mean in a bad crazy. He just he started messing around with scotch. And then he was like, I don't know. He was reading some websites or something about single malt scotch whiskeys. And then they were saying at the liquor store by Tulane University, try this, <laughs> try that. And he did, you know, so there's no going back now. But um. It was pretty interesting. He, he just sends me these messages, you know. Oh, and uh, we have a hard time pronouncing those words. I, I don't really do a good job pronouncing, like, we had that cow. Kalila. 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 And we had this. Then he, then he went and bought the Ard. Kalila. And he went and bought the Ardberg. Ardberg. <laughs> what? Ardberg. Ardberg. If he bought the art bag after he bought that Kalila, Kalila's one of my favorite basic scotches, 12 year old. I mean, I really prefer it over the art bag or the uh, Lafroy 10. Uh, I like Kalila a lot. I like their different, different iterations and the different things they do with it. What you guys was getting out of it though. I just, I was sitting there going, I wonder if when I first started, <laughs> that's what I got. You know, I just it, it was trying to I was trying to dial that back, but actually Kalila was late. I was already tried Art Big and Lafroig first, and I like them both, but the Kalila is more subtle and it, it brings those flavors around in a little bit different way. But I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed that video. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you liked it. One one thing I liked about the video, well, I didn't like the way he insisted that I put ice in it. Yeah. And I said, I ain't doing that again. But anyway, but I went along with it. I didn't pay for it. It didn't matter, you know. But I um, I like the part where I took, I did like that. And I said, it's like if you had a congestion, you put Vicks in your nose and on your chest. Because this is true. I was looking on the uh, Art Bag website, their, their actual website. And one of their descriptors of their single malt tenure was Vicks Vapo Rub. And I said, ah, you're not as stupid as people may believe. 
Art Bay, when you try that Art Bay tin, I, th I assume that's what you got. You're going to find He's got. The, the difference between it and the Kalila is even for an Isla Scotch is night and day. I mean, it's 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 going to punch you. I mean, and and if you go the route eventually to Lafroy, that's even a different punch. I mean, that's you're going into cigarette ashes and all kinds of medicinal stuff. Oh yeah, well, I like all that kind of stuff. So people people always tell me, "Oh, you're not going to like it. It's going to be too intense." I was like, "Well, that's what I like." <laughs> You'll so, like it. Then. So uh, and he just sending me these messages. Oh man! Oh man! You know, I was like, "Well, I mean." When you drink great stuff, it tastes great, right? So, duh. But um, he's funny. But, you know, David, he ought to be doing these hangouts. He'll never do it, though. You know? But he's funny because he'll be like, all the ones you're talking about, come to the hot rod shop. Let's drink. And then he'll tell me, I want some of that. I want some of that uh, Stedman Select. Three-year aged. He'd go crazy. He'd go crazy if he walked in my room. Oh, he'd flip out because, uh, you know, people might say, oh, how could he drink Stedman Select, which is $19.99 for uh, 1.75, and then turn around and drink that expensive scotch or, you know, moderately expensive scotch. But the main, he's kind of like myself. I think that's why we get along, even though there's like conflict in the videos. But uh, because mainly we just like, drinking it <laughs> you know when you, when you get down to the common denominator <clears throat> well you got to have conflict conflict allows you to measure e each other's experience and that that's a good thing to draw on i mean that conflict whether it be in tasting or whether it be an ideology it's still interesting and how do you gauge somebody if you don't have the conflict right and somebody was commenting saying um i watched his videos so many times now he's negative he's a bully i'm never gonna watch a video again that he's appearing on and i was like okay and i was thinking you don't you, you're not understanding the dynamic that well because you're only looking at the video, right? So here's the video. But you're not seeing the whole background and and him and me. And it could be you and I, if I live close to you or whatever, saying, uh, oh, you're wrong, you're wrong, and yelling and then saying, oh, let's go get that spaghetti and meatballs. You know, so it's like there's – it's kind of out of – it's like lifted out of the whole reality. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But people are only seeing the video so they can only look at it in that. And so they're saying, he's a bully. He's a bully. I was like, yeah, right. I'm going to let somebody bully me on, on whiskey. I don't think so. Oh, well, you know, it's just, it's kind of funny how videos work. I don't know. I find it kind of comical, you know, in a way. Yep. You only see that little window. Yeah. And John and Neely, you know what I'm talking about. Like people will tell me, you're an old drunk. You just drink all day. I said, well, you only see the videos. That's right. You know, I don't want to see a video. Hours. There's another 23 hours and 30 minutes in the day. <laughs> right. Do you really want to see a video of me cutting the grass? <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> just started putting out some videos at work. Work with Ron or start with Ron. You know, wear one of those GoPro cameras while you're mowing a mowing a yard. Right. What the sad, the scary. Part. Like, hey, I told you guys you wouldn't want to watch this stuff, but hey, here you go. No, the more troubling and scary part is there are some people that would be responding to me like, "I'm really into that," and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> "That was that was the response I was really not shooting for." All right. Um, anyway, let's see a few. <laughs> it's actually the truth. All right. A few comments and then uh, we got to stop. Uh, um, speaking of winter beers, I'm working my way through the Guinness 200 year anniversary pack. I've had one of each stop and so far they are fantastic. Oh, yeah, they're dynamite. And then Tyler says clap. 
Is there any chance there will be a Lord Calvert whiskey review asking for a friend? Wink. Uh, yeah, there's a, a Lord Calvert in my cabinet. Wink. I just thought I'd mention that for no particular reason. <clears throat> well, look at you. You can learn from Whiskey Scout. Cool comparison. Oh, well, no, I read that wrong. Look what you can learn from the Whiskey Scout. Cool comparison of bottles. I know. I never would have dreamed they were they were reshopping their own bottles. Aldehyde says Anile's Pizzeria is good. Okay. The Party Source says Rich and Rare is a fantastic bottle. I agree with that. The Rich and Rare Reserve was actually developed by the original maker of Crown Royal. What? Now that's a shock. Hans Gomez says God bless America. Okay. And 48, 47 straight says and the rest of the solar system. All right, things are getting very uh, creative. Craft Beer at Poor says, cheers, everyone. And then Aldehyde says, John Anile is a whiskey bully. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I was too scared to tell him that because I was feeling, you know, intimidated. The truth right. is out now. Oh, man. Right. You can make the whiskey bully. That could be a good channel. Um. Well, la, 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 party time, blah, la. Anyway, final thoughts. My final thought is that, uh, heck, you could pay $12 to get two value meals at Burger King. Why not buy a bottle of Rich and Rare Reserve? You get way better payoff, right? I think so, yeah. I recommend it. Yeah. Same, same here. Uh, definitely recommend it. It's cheap. Why not? I'm trying to figure out what the downside is. You know. And it, all right, Whiskey Scout. <laughs> you guys said everything that I agree with. There ain't nothing I can really add to that. <laughs> all right. So now I have even more exciting news. In two weeks, exactly two weeks at six central. Six Central. Um, we have scheduled and Robert. Oh, yeah, this is bad news. Why am I even saying six central? Because it's non-applicable. This is good and bad. We have King Robert the second blended scotch whiskey. And you know what that means. I've never even seen a bottle of that. I've never, heard of it. I've never seen it in Louisiana aside from my own cabinet. So, I bought it on that road trip to to uh, Peach. No, it wasn't Peachtree City. What was that? Where was that store located? Fairburn, Fairburn, Georgia. Hmm. What's the name of that place? The uh, World World of Beverage. World. Oh yeah, I could have laid down some big time money there, but I tried to control myself, but. When I saw that, when I, what's the name of that scotch? That oh, the Cuddy Sark for two hundred and fifty dollars. I was like, oh yeah, this is a fifty dollar black bottle of Cuddy Sark. Yeah, that was something else. Was that the Tam O'Shanter? Uh, honestly, Robert, I'm not even sure that they had an entire glass case display with all these really high end. Products and most of them, you know, you can't even pronounce the name. And then it's like, hey, Cuddy Sark, just kind of hanging around in there with all the big boys. But uh, well, did, it, did it come in a big, kind of a rectangular uh, square box? It came in a big rectangular wooden box with yep. a glass covering, and it was a black bottle. Yeah, it sounds like I believe that's what the one they call the Tam O'Shanter, and that's it's a spinoff on the Robert Burns poem and. Uh, that's just it. I, I don't know anything about it. I've seen it once here in Kansas at a liquor store in Salina, and it's still there because it's just not something that's probably ever going to sell that quickly. It's going to take somebody who really wants to, who's looking for that, to walk in there and want to pay that price for it. When I saw that, yeah. when I saw that, I wrote a poem called "Not Going There." <laughs> well, I don't own it, so it kind of tells you something. Not Tam O'Shanter. No, I mean, but I'll say that. And it's funny because every time I say that, I always do it. Um, 
you, you know, you want to do it, you know, it's like, oh, but think of all the stuff I could buy for $250, you know, all this other stuff. Yeah. So that was a fascinating place, but we were caught in so much traffic. It was a funny day because me, John and I were like so irritated. We had to walk up a mountain and then we, we were like in the heat and we wanted to get back home. And then he was like, well, let's go to this place. And I was like, well, of course I'm going to go. But and then the traffic was so bad and it was like so irritating. You know, you remember that day. Yeah. Every day of my life with that traffic, man. Oh, oh yeah. I was glad. It was you, get to, you get used to it after a while. You don't even notice it. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I really, I really did notice it. All right. Well, anyway, um, I mean, we have bad traffic around here. I'm not going to say we don't. I'm just not in it. Um, but that world of beverage, I highly recommend it. It's just like a wonderland. It's like a wonderland. It's I don't know. It's, it's great. I know. I know you have places like that in Kansas. I know that an adult party store. <laughs> yeah, you have places like that in Kansas. You know that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Kansas City's a blast. <laughs> oh yeah. I can't. I can't wait to go back. All right. Well. Anyway. We had a fun time examining Rich and Rare Reserve, which we give a strong but yet qualified, because you have to use some intelligence, but a strong but qualified endorsement of purchasing that particular product. I don't think you'll be disappointed if you look at it within the proper context. Do you agree with that? Yep, absolutely. And then, of course, you could you could make arguments against the context, but that's another arg argument, you know. Anyway, all right. Well, uh, so join us, but it won't be as many people, unfortunately, sadly, in two weeks. But you know, maybe in Canada they can get King Robert the Second. King Robert the Second is a strange. I thought only the United States did those weird brands of every kind of liquor. But apparently they do it in Scotland too, so that's confusing to me. You know, in the United States they'll have like some phony baloney name. It'll be a brand of every kind of liquor, gin, scotch, bourbon, Canadian, uh, uh, rum. Yeah, yeah, that's a good good example. Fleischmann's, right? What? Or Fleischmann's? Fleischmann's. Barton. Yep. There's several that does that. Because you got T, uh, J, was it J.W. Dant? I think it is. They do both a blended scotch and a bourbon, which I think's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and by the way, we, tr we tried some of that J.W. Dant straight bourbon in. My friend David went berserk. He was so excited. <laughs> I got a bottle. He just went crazy. And I was saying, what do you, I said, what? He was like, ah, and he just kept going, like getting more, like <laughs> extremely excited because we were at the liquor store and he said, oh, I'm here. <laughs> grocery store. And he said, I'm buying it. I'm buying it. Cause he already had a bottle of the JW Dan scotch. It was eleven ninety nine. I said, well, go ahead. And then we were at his house. He said, let's try this stuff. I have a video coming up. I said, okay. Oh, man, he just went crazy. And I said, now, you see, that's the best part about this tasting hobby because you could just go crazy over it, you know. And I don't mean mad crazy. He was like happy crazy. But yeah, like you're saying, all these like dedicated brands. But I didn't know they did that in Europe. So I hmm. found that kind of fascinating that there's King Robert the Second gin. Oh. Oh yeah. King Robert the Second vodka. And I'm thinking to myself, who copied who? You know, did we steal that idea from Europe or did the Europeans steal the idea from us? Makes you wonder. All right, well, anyway, blah, blah, blah. It was fun, folks. I don't have anything else to say. I ran out of statements. 
enjoyed it. It's all it's always fun doing these examinations with you guys. Yes, I do. I enjoy it too. Yes, and I have a taste challenge coming up tomorrow morning with Black Velvet Reserve against of all things Canadian Crest. Mm. I don't think I'll get it wrong, but as we've learned in the past, you can't ever be too sure. That's right. Thanks, folks, for watching this video production.